Hi folks, Dave the Maverick Beekeeper, welcome to my channel. Uh, for people who are returning and also welcome to any newcomers. Um, I've been at this a while and posting up videos and you could say, am I filling in time? Yes, I am, I think, to an extent until the season starts and we can do some more of the practical side of things. So I was looking at uh, the videos I have put up so far and I noticed uh, from the views that the History 101 of beekeeping seems quite popular. Now, I know the chap next door to me probably thinks I'm absolutely crazy uh, and I talk to myself a lot, but trying to explain in Arabic that I had a misspent youth could be lost in translation. So what I'm going to do is uh, a small three part series on this fella. Some of you among some of you beekeepers will know who this is. Um, he is a pioneer in his field. Um, for the Scots amongst you, I'll give you another clue. And yes, there is a bit of a joke in this one. So, what I'm going to talk about is Brother Adam and the origins of the Buckfast Bee. Um, so, without further ado, I will start the first part. And it is Brother Adam and the origins of the Buckfast Bee. So, enjoy. Brother Adam lived an interesting life and contributed to the beekeeping practices in many ways. His innovation with breeding honeybees and nurturing traits by selection and to stabilize them throughout the lineage was remarkable. And being a force known worldwide as an authority in this field was recorded and passed into the annals of beekeeping history as an innovator. This tireless pursuit earned him recognition at the highest level attracting an OBE and two doctorates through the University of Uppsala in Sweden and Exeter University in Devon. He also became the Vice President of the Bee Research Association, which is a remarkable achievement. He was a driven and spirited individual, displayed great determination, which was reflected throughout his work with honeybees. A young man from German descent arrived at the tender age of 11 in the United Kingdom, leaving his family in his native country to become a monk. Having arrived at Buckfast Abbey, mainly occupied by the Benedictine order who were swore to silence, he was only permitted to speak French and English, and not his native tongue. This was a very alien environment to a young impressionable lad. Originally named Carl at birth, the abbots renamed him Lewis throughout all of his novice studies. Having completed these studies, his vows were taken and he was renamed Adam. The monastery had fallen into disrepair after its closure in 1539 by King Henry VIII and Brother Adam's first task involved stonemasonry. He was tasked to help with the restoration of the abbey. And of course, this proved to be arduous, and with homesickness and ill health, he struggled but found the work rewarding. At 16 years of age, he was handed over to another monk brother, Columban, as an assistant in the abbey kitchen. But his work also included assisting brother Columban and managing beehives in the abbey grounds, which Adam helped and the journey started from the beginning. In a world of silent men, he grew to love the bees. At the time of Brother Adam's introduction to beekeeping, a disease was ravaging the native black bees and was thought to originate from the Isle of Wight and the causal effect of the tracheal mites. This decimated the native bee population. This was far reaching and out of 64 hives in the abbey grounds, only 16 survived. The remaining hives that survived were in, interesting in certain observations. Although not obvious at first, it was noted the bees were of a cross species, namely the black bee, Apis mellifera mellifera, and the Italian bees, Apis mellifera ligustica, the leather colored bee from Italy. The bees were an asset to the abbey as it was a self-sustaining work to produce beeswax and of course honey. The local species had suffered a heavy blow and of course the only way to deal with the rebuild was to import foreign queens. So the work began and the results were remarkable. Having imported the foreign stock, namely the Italian queens and the Carniolan, 
the hive count grew from 45 colonies that made 5,000 pounds of honey in that year, again a remarkable achievement. The following year the decision to produce more nucleus bees was taken and the honey crop was temporarily sacrificed. As the commercial venture gathered momentum, it became increasingly difficult for Brother Columban, who suffered from the huge workload and decided to retire back to the kitchen duties he had also participated in before. With only three years of tutelage, Brother Adam was left to manage the bees single-handed. This was a huge mountain to climb, and at the time, World War I was raging. This presented logistical problems to Brother Adam, as sugar was in short supply due to climatic changes and of course the war in Europe. As this valuable commodity became available, he embarked on a regime of feeding sugar water to bring the hive to a desirable winter weight. But this was an error, as the high water content caused dysentery and his full-size production colonies were lost only leaving his nucleus stock that were fed with fondant. With this loss, he had to build again. Brother Adam continued with his rigorous religious studies, but always found time in the schedule to read beekeeping publications. From his reading, he found articles submitted by prominent individuals and found inspiring. Sources that offered him inspiration were Gleanings, original name for Bee Culture magazine, and of course, the British Bee Journal. From the contributors of articles in these publications, prominent figures such as Professor L. Armbruster, writing studies about bee breeding being a strong influence, Brother Adam felt compelled to write and eventually met and they became firm friends thereafter. Two further authorities became a source of valuable information were Samuel Simmons and F.W. Slade and their work and breeding programs with the White Star line of Canolians and the Cyprian stock. Brother Adam's work followed a scientific approach with divisions of colonies into specific groups, experimenting with new ideas and keeping control groups as comparison. So began his lifelong bee breeding ventures. As his enterprise grew, it became apparent that standardization was the key to better management. And he knew that the differences in equipment in the Abbey grounds made things difficult and overcomplicated. The Burgess perfection was in a common use across the United Kingdom, but did not stand up to the prolific Ligurian queens. The decision to use double brood boxes on one colony proved to be very productive with six supers of honey being produced, more than any of his other colonies put together. Other beekeepers were utilizing 10 frame Langstroth hives, but Adam regarded them as too small. From further study of the Gleaning Journal, a hypothesis came forth. He mused that the Dadent hives held 12 frames and measured 20 by 20 by 12, which gave him the capacity of 2,050 square inches. Perfect. This would ensure minimum brood box manipulation and the need to adjust brood feeding and retain a large workforce. And as the Langstroth have conceived of before, the bee space. In 1924, Brother Adam struck success with a newly modified Dayton, enjoying a surplus of honey being more than 335 pounds of surplus with each hive compared to the British standard, 224 pounds. Hmm, he was onto something there. That completes the first part of uh, Brother Adam and the origins of the Buckfast Bees. As you can see from uh, the opening screen, I've dedicated this to my friend uh, Lee Starkey, who's a former Royal Marine and who I served with for a short period of time. And um, unfortunately, he wasn't lost in conflict, he was lost to the conflict with cancer. Um, and as we know, there's no vaccine, unlike COVID, as sad as it is, um, a vaccine to, to deal with this. Just the determination to survive and the help of family and friends around you. So if you find it in your hearts to, to donate to a cancer charity, every little bit of donation given uh, helps towards that fight. And uh, I would thank you very much for doing that. If you can, just spare as much as you can. 
anyway, on a more lighter note, if you enjoyed this first part of Brother Adam and his Buckfast Bees, then please like, subscribe, uh, comment, share if you wish. I would be much grateful. So I will put up the next one in the next few days uh, and we'll continue with the story of Brother Adam. And thanks for watching. <laughs>